when we raised the money within the community to, to develop this station to be at a sustainable fire station, it was also about the education because we get 30,000 school kids visit our school camps and we thought this might be a really good opportunity to engage with some of those, stick with this kids teaching kids where they develop the program. We give them the base, they have full access to the fire station. We treat it as one of their classrooms. Today's about two really different communities, Rathewen and the Anglesey communities. Our kids fortunately haven't experienced a bushfire of, of any significance. And meeting kids who have lived through some of that, this, the swapping of knowledge and experience of teaching and learning about bushfires I think is really important, particularly from two completely different vegetation types and areas. Knowledge dispels fear. Um, so if our kids both here and Strathewans and I would look at the Marysvilles or any kid in the high risk fire areas, if they understand about fire behaviour and understanding what's a risk and what's a bad day and what's not and what to be fearful of and it's all based on knowledge. The, the whole program for our kids has been about loving where they live and understanding fire, um, building that confidence to, to just have the information and and think about the fire season and, and know what to do, know how to manage things, encourage their families to, to manage where we live, our, our environment and our risks and things. It's just been a, a really positive project for our children. In the turnout room there was two uniforms and one's for house fires and one's for bushfires. We were using the yellow box to figure out the moisture in the leaves. I learned that if you're in a very bushy area and it's very dry, the fire can move much quicker. And if you're on a slope, the fire can move up much quicker than moving down. Today I learned how to use a MacArthur meter. The MacArthur meter is a way of finding out the fire danger rating for the day. We were telling them about how the weather can affect fire. We were teaching them how to use some of the fire tools. It, the hotter it gets, dries out the fuels. The cooler it gets, the moisture gets to the, the fuel. This is just a great way for our children to, to really draw together a whole lot of the learning that they've done. Hi, I'm Lucy and I work at the City of Yarra Council in Emergency Management. I'm here with my friend Kieran today to talk about heat waves in the City of Yarra. Um, the heat, in fact, in this city is quite different from other parts in the world. Kieran, what are some of the things that can actually affect us in Yarra City when we've got periods of extreme heat? Yeah, in periods of extreme heat, Lucy, we have power outages, uh, transport disruptions and extreme pressures on our health and hospital services. That's probably pretty important for people who get quite sick in the heat, which is so easy to, to happen. That's right, and so that, that's why this is a very important topic. So how can people stay safe and cool in the city of Yarra? That's a great question, Lucy. Um, a cheap, safe and easy thing we can do, or people can do, is drink plenty of water, head downstairs if it's hot, find the coolest room, draw the blinds, uh, turn off electrical items that aren't necessary, put ice cubes, obviously, for your pets in the pet water bowls, uh, it's very important to keep them cool. Place uh, change into loose fitting clothing is very important to keep cool. Um, also you can place a bowl of ice in front of a fan just to circulate some cool air. Uh, another great idea is freeze or dampen a washcloth. Put that over your neck to keep cool uh, during hot periods. So Kieran, how do people stay updated and know what to do in, if the heat wave is coming? In these situations, Lucy, we recommend that uh, people obviously listen to the radio, watch TV, and on the City of uh, Yarra website has all the information available. So who can people call for help or advice during a heat wave? I suggest, Lucy, people call Nurse on Call, 1300 60 60 24. Life-threatening, I'd be calling triple zero. Hi, my name's Senior Sergeant Peter Steiger from the Queensland Police Service. Uh, we're here today at the Carlisle Gardens Retirement Resort in Townsville to chat to some of the members of the Disaster Management Group. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, would you just like to introduce yourself for us, please? I'm Gordon Simpson, ex Fire Brigade and State Emergency Service. Hi, I'm John Wilson. I was uh, a carpenter, then joined the Army, and after that I was a courier. My name's Mike McCloskey, uh, retired Queensland Fire and Rescue Service Officer. My name's Eddie Bessie, I'm an ex-retired uh, uh, Army officer and uh, also a courier. 
Okay, Gordon, um, could you tell me the story of the disaster management group from the beginning here at Carlisle Gardens? Our story began after the year, cyclone season 05, 06. A group of us got together to work out how we could care for our elderly and disabled res residents who had difficulty in the event of a disaster. So with management approval, we formed a disaster management group. We progressively improved things over the years and in 2014 we formalised our arrangements in the plans we have today. Thanks Gordon. Uh, so John, how did you go about this? This would have been quite a task. Yes it is. There are 457 independent living homes and on average a residency of 600. To manage the village, we're divided into 15 areas with a marshal and a team of three allocated to each. And for communications, we were able to obtain a base station and portable radios. Okay. Uh, thanks, John. Um, Mike, um, can you tell me more about uh, Cyclone Yasi? This was a, quite a large system, Category 5. Fortunately, the vill village suffered little damage. However, we lost power for almost five days. With two generators, we supplied enough power to get, get by with. Also, by using three large barbecues and donated food, we fed about 100 residents who had no means of cooking two meals daily until power was restored. That was very appreciated. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Eddie, this must have been a great challenge. Uh, you must all be very proud of the outcome um, of what's been achieved here at the village. Absolutely. Each November when the marshals and their teams visit the areas to update the residents' details is when the gratefulness, the security and caring is most expressed, especially by our widows. At our post-cyclone debriefing or end of cyclone uh, period brief, we are always looking at ways to improve and become more disaster resilient. Okay, gentlemen, thanks very much for your time today. Um, I know from a disaster manager's perspective, uh, their achievements out here at the village uh, really do make our job easier and um, it's building this community resilience. Is, uh, is what we're really all about. So um, I really do appreciate what you've done, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Disaster Hub is an innovative technology-based initiative designed and developed by the Sunshine Coast Council. It serves to strengthen community disaster resilience, making the Sunshine Coast safer, stronger, and better prepared to manage any emergency situation. Disaster Hub is a great example of the role technology can play in building disaster resilience. It provides real-time information for the public, business community, media and external agencies before, during and after disaster events. Utilising the media and the fact that um, social media plays such an important role and is so instantaneous, clearly we would be well advised to be using that as effectively as possible. Disaster Hub provides advice to help residents, visitors and businesses prepare for disaster events and stay up to date with important information such as road closures, weather warnings and breaking news. It's also a critical tool for the local disaster coordination centre during all types of disasters and is tightly integrated into annual disaster management exercises. Exercises are absolutely critical. All the agencies have come together from the QFES to the Q Queensland Police to the Ambulance Services and all our support agencies and we're all working together managing what's the information we know and we try to transport that information into basically knowledge and wisdom and make the right calls at the right time to support our community. Disaster Hub allows Council to gather accurate intelligence and the latest feeds from numerous sources, enabling coordinators to make quick and informed decisions during emergencies and disasters. It has proven to be an invaluable asset for regional disaster operations and it contributes significantly towards a safer and more resilient community. Disaster Hub is your one-stop shop for what to do before, during and after emergency and disaster events.